Hello everybody and welcome back to Canned Goods, the show all about the movies that we'll never see. The early 2000s was a very confusing time for Disney. After coming off an unprecedented string of successful movies for the past decade and change, the Mouse House began producing movies that were less conventional. And in that time we received movies that were some of Disney's best, some of their worst, and some cult classics that are a ton of fun. It was a wildly eclectic set of movies. What's interesting is that one of the casualties of that era might actually be the most unique movie that Disney never made. A movie that captured that electric energy in the studio at the time. And today we're going to talk about that movie as we break down the development and cancellation of the Romeo and Juliet and Ghost movie, A Few Good Ghosts. Our story begins in late 1999. Barry Cook just finished up directing duties on Mulan and started workshopping ideas for his next movie that he wanted to pitch to Disney. He eventually settled on a story called The Ghost and the Gift, which was based on a short story that he wrote earlier in his life. The story was about three children and a ghost helping an Appalachian couple get together. The Ghost and the Gift was pitched to Disney's at the time CEO, Michael Eisner, and the head of feature animation, Thomas Schumacher, who both rejected the pitch, with Eisner believing that the story needed more conflict and Schumacher feeling that the film he just got pitched would lend itself better to being live action rather than animation. After the rejection, Cook looked for ways to retool his pitch to win over Disney, and he reviewed all of his research that he'd done on Appalachia for the original story, and he remembered that it was a common practice for the residents to make dolls out of household items. He reworked the pitch with these dolls as the hook for the story, even going so far as to make a preliminary model of Angel, one of the main dolls, as a visual aid for the pitch meeting. There was one problem, though. Cook was based out of the Florida animation office, while the pitch was in the Los Angeles office. He couldn't personally make it out there, so he packed away the Angel doll in a violin case and shipped it across the country. Cook repitched the story, now under the title of My Peoples to Schumacher over the phone, and had him open the violin case at the end of the pitch meeting. Instantly interested, Schumacher greenlit the movie. Cook's pitch began in the 1940s in Appalachia, Texas, with a story focused on two feuding families, the McGees and the Harpers. As fate would have it, the children of the families, Rose and Elgin, would fall in love. Elegant loved making homemade dolls out of household items, and those were to have been his peoples, which is where the title of the movie would have came from. These dolls included the previously mentioned Angel, who looked like an angel, Abe, who was modeled after Abraham Lincoln, Cherokee, who looked like a Cherokee Native American, and even more colorful characters. Furious of their love, Old Man McGee concocts a potion of Blue Moon Brew, his mother's recipe, to try and erase Elgin's memory and break Elgin and Rose up. The potion doesn't do that, but it does bring Elgin's dolls to life. Angel decides that she wants no part in getting the couple together and tries to leave town, with some of the other dolls following her trying to convince her to return. Meanwhile, the dolls that stay behind are trying to help the couple solidify their love and keep away the guy that Old Man McGee is trying to set Rose up with. The movie was to be a hybrid of 2D and 3D animation. The dolls were going to be 3D CGI with all the humans and environments to be 2D hand-drawn animation since Cook believed that fully CGI movies just seemed a little too simple. And with all these pieces in place, production began. Concept art, animatics, and even a concept trailer which should be on screen right now was produced. The movie got so far that there were even casting discussions between Disney with the likes of Dolly Parton, Ashley Judd, and Lou Rawls, to name a few from a potentially very promising cast. So with all of this promise, that raises the question, why did it get canned? Production was moving along smoothly until January of 2003. That month, Thomas Schumacher resigned from his position of head of animation at Disney and was replaced by David Stanton, who was the head of the TV animation division. Stanton almost immediately began to suggest changes for My Peoples after being unimpressed with storyboards. After Stanton ordered that the project get retooled, Cook took a research trip to the Appalachian Mountains, and during that time, he heard a ton of ghost stories told to him by the people that he met on the trip. At that point, Cook made his final major edit to the script, so that now the dolls would be possessed by the spirits of long past members of the Harper clan. And with that, the title was changed from My Peoples to A Few Good Ghosts to better fit the story. Over the preceding years, Cook grew really fond of that original idea. So the change to the ghost angle upset him a little bit, but he understood that his director duties came with some sacrifices needing to be made. On the opposite end of the spectrum, after viewing the new story reels in November of 2003, 
Staten and Michael Eisner were very pleased with the new direction the film was taking, with Eisner going so far as to congratulate the team, telling them that they finally have a movie here, comparing it to a Pixar movie in terms of quality. But later that month, fortunes quickly changed. On November 14, 2003, Staten flew down to the Florida Animation Office and abruptly announced that A Few Good Ghosts was being cancelled in favor of Chicken Little, since he believed that Chicken Little was a well-known story and would be more likely to draw an audience. A few weeks later, he also announced that the Florida Animation Branch would be closing in March of 2004 and that pretty much everybody was going to be losing their jobs, Cook included. And on that wildly depressing note, that's where my people's A Few Good Ghosts and Barry Cook's time at Disney was laid to rest. It's definitely a shame that the movie was cancelled, especially because the movie was cancelled for Chicken Little. Because Chicken Little is a very strange movie <laughs> with a bad moral that seemed very off-brand for Disney, even by the standards of that very experimental Disney era. I mean, A Few Good Ghosts also seemed strange, but in an eclectic and creative way, a movie about family and forgiveness and all those great Disney lessons. I would readily trade Chicken Little for A Few Good Ghosts. No questions asked. But that's the story of A Few Good Ghosts and the end of yet another episode of Canned Goods. So until next time, thank you for watching, have a beautiful day, and stay hammers.